Our next caller is Stephen from Alberta, Canada. Hey, Stephen, how can we help you? Hey, guys, how's it going? Thanks a lot for having me on. Yeah, good. Yeah. Um, my question is, how do you recommend I proceed with hip movements when I have a mechanical issue, not a mobility issue? So some context, um, some time ago I had an x-ray and my SI joint is just, there's a slight asymmetry, maybe like a quarter inch out. And that has a pretty pronounced shift in how I do a lot of my hip movements, particularly back squats. There's a really pronounced jog as I come up or uh, single leg RDLs or like banded pistol squats. My body weight really shifts to the one side to compensate. So, um, and I know it's not necessarily a mobility issue because I'm really good at, I can, I can squat ass the grass. I can, um, I'm really good with the 90-90s. So I don't know if you guys think I should maybe do a really strong regression or or what. Yeah. Okay. So um, essentially, mm. what you're saying is one joint is, yeah, it's is anatomical, built. not mechanical. Yeah, right, anatomically so. built. Okay. Different. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so, yeah. Yeah. You know, I had a client once who had one leg, which actually shorter uh, mm -hmm. than the other. Yeah, I've had that before too. And um, I mean, one thing we could have done is right. We could have had him just exercise with both legs with a block underneath one foot. But what I did is I did everything unilateral yeah. uh, with him, and mm -hmm. I would suggest the same thing for you. I would do almost all of your lumbar pelvic hip exercises uh, as unilateral step ups and you know lunges and single leg exercises because. You know, if you put both legs on the ground, you're going to get some compensation, which is going to happen anyway in, in naturally because you walk, right? So you walk with both legs. So there's some compensation going on there. Uh, but the unilateral stuff will allow you to train each side independently without the other side influencing uh, the other side, essentially. So I would focus almost entirely on unilateral exercises, and I think that's where you're going to find your best uh, results. Yeah, I was going to, you know, definitely like echo that same thing because – you, if you focus on that, you're going to be able to then understand too all those little micro compensations and things that you know your body will tend to have uh, in a split stance or, or you know on a single leg uh, type of a situation. And so to be able to slow down and, and isolate that and really work on stabilizing and, and gaining control. Uh, is going to be everything. So to really go slow and then, you know, add where where you feel the most instability, uh, I would really like hone in on that and like even add in some isometric tension there to to reinforce it and to really like start communicating a bit better with that process. So first of all, you can definitely uh, build incredible legs uh, never doing a bilateral squat. So you can do Bulgarians and lunges and uh, single leg exercises all day long and build incredible legs. So it's not a, it's not a huge loss to not be able to do a bilateral back squat ever again. So I would train you the exact same way. Now, the only thing that I would caution you is you're going to have obviously one side where there is some discrepancy and maybe a little bit weaker, and you have a one side that's going to be stronger. Make sure you lead with the, 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 the side that's most challenged for you. So the side that you are weaker in should dictate how you train the stronger leg. So sometimes when you, you, you push somebody in this direction to go all unilateral work, and they got one side that's so much better. They keep pushing the weight in that direction. That should always be the, the second leg that you train. So always stick with the, the weaker leg and do things like Justin's saying, focus on you know stability and, and isometrics and then you know mirror that for the other leg. Even if you could do two, three, four more reps or 50 more pounds, doesn't matter. You know, that way you stay even as you as you develop your legs. Now, as far as mobility exercises, um, if you don't have MAPS Prime Pro, we'll send that over to you. You can okay. still do lots of mobility exercise. Because here's the deal with, with, these, with these movements, these correctional exercise kind of mobility movements. You're working with your body's own range of motion. You're trying to connect with your body. So your body's going to dictate what that looks like, right? So... You know, two people's, you know, 90 90 is going to look very, very different. And you may have one side that looks very different from the other. That's okay. It doesn't matter. The goal is to challenge your range of motion and connect to those new ranges of motion, regardless of one side versus the other. Just out of curiosity, too, uh, Stephen, did you, when you got the x ray, did you, was this something you did like with a chiropractor or a doctor? Like, where, where did you get it done? Yeah. So I had an assessment with the chiro and he recommended I get the x ray and then, um, 
we kind of he did a few of his correctional exercises, but I haven't been seeing him since. Mm. Yeah. Okay. So that's yeah, a yeah. great yeah. question, Adam. Yeah, no. uh, <laughs> that uh, changes this question. now. Yeah. Why don't you get another uh, second opinion? Uh, yeah. Get another opinion. Work with a sports medicine uh, expert or somebody. I'm gonna I, I'm gonna go ahead and, and make sure. Doug, would you gift him the private forum also? So you know. One of my favorite functional doctor chiropractors is Doctor Brink, and he's yeah. for the most part. I, I I don't like a lot of chiropractors. There, that's not to say there's not some good ones that are out there. Just th this happens to be like uh, chiropractor 101 is to mm -hmm. you know is to tell you you've got some sort of your one leg's a little bit longer than the other. This mm -hmm. and you need to come in and see me, and I'm going to adjust you and yep. and get you straight and right. And, and I'm then the we got these supplements that also yeah, that's right, that. that's right. So uh, and I had a feeling that this might have been where you heard this from. So uh, one, I would get a second opinion, like Sal said. Two, we're going to let you inside the forum. I want you to express some of this in there. Uh, uh, publicly, if you don't mind, and tag Dr. Justin Brink. That's right. That's tag right. Dr. Justin Brink in there and uh, tell him what you've been told and what you've seen, and then see where he takes you from there. Um, I have a feeling maybe you, you might be just okay. Okay, but I mean, I did see myself on the X-ray that there is a sure, a, a definitely a definite asymmetry. Sure, sure. I mean, uh, we but all it, it we just, all. By the way, we all do. We, right. no, nobody here, nobody has a, a complete okay. equal left to right side. Nobody does. Yeah, but it, but it could also mean it could mean something. It could mean nothing. That's right. Um, mm -hmm. So okay. uh, yeah. So so do what Adam said, and then see what happened. And if that ends up being the case, then the advice we gave earlier still stands. And I don't know for sure because I don't see you. I don't know who this was, but mm -hmm. I just I the reason why I asked the question is this is a very common tactic that chiropractic It's a bit of a hustle a lot it of is. times. It's it's very very common right. um and so you know before we completely change your life and your training forever let's get a second opinion on what they have to say about that um and then we're going to let you in the forum so we could discuss more about it. So just quickly circling back you you recommend completely eliminating bilateral movements squats? Not until you you have somebody else give you another opinion. I would say okay. yeah, figure that out first. And yeah. if that ends okay, up cool. being the case then yeah, do that. Sounds good. All right, thank you. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it. No yep. problem. Yeah, the the it's actually not that common to have the left and the right side be different enough to where you have to completely change your training, unless there was an injury, like if somebody yeah. tore something or broke a bone. Right, you're in a car accident but and you, shifted everything. Yeah, but more often than not, like you said, Adam, you, you have a chiropractor come back, oh, here we got some, look at the spine here. A bunch of adjustments will fix this, whatever. Or I can see that your SI joint here is very different. There, I, therefore, I have to treat it. Yeah, that's right. Uh, oftentimes, it's muscular. You mm -hmm. know, like, for example, uh, you could have a shorter leg, mm -hmm. not because your bones are shorter, but rather because one side is tighter. Your QL, right? It's a muscle mm -hmm. that, that attaches at your hip. Could be shortened on one side and correctional exercise could balance that out. Now, you could also have a shorter leg because the bone is actually shorter like the guy that right. I, I talked about Right, look at it like the tension of rubber bands and like holding everything in place and, you know, and they, they look definitely from a, a skeletal perspective and so if anything is like a little bit off a lot of times they think that just manually that's right manipulating it is gonna you know get you back in alignment however most of the work is going to be you know adjusting uh muscular that's right and a lot of times it's it's literally just a stability and strength issue that's going on here that's causing some sort of a shift in the squat yeah, more often than not yes more often than not it's that but then when you go and see someone like a chiropractor and do that now I'm not, again i'm not i have no idea but and I could be speaking out of turn, but in my experience, um, I took a lot of clients like this that we completely resolved the issue by getting them more stable and strong and more mobile uh, because it wasn't something that crazy, you know. And everybody is not is perfectly symmetrical. I mean, yeah. So, but you got to you got to be careful, you know. When you're talking to a hammer, uh, everything looks like a nail. Mm -hmm. um, I, I I tell you what, I've had I can't tell you how many clients I had that would go to a surgeon. Because of joint pain, and the result, the, the advice from the surgeon was almost always surgery. Right. Yeah. Oh, your shoulder hurts. Well, because oh. they know how to fix things with surgery. Yeah. Oh, this is what we saw. There's a little bit of a tear here. I can scope that. I can do whatever. And almost all these people, through proper exercise, ended up not having to go uh, get surgery. And, and you see this with chiropractors yeah. sometimes as well. But again, we could be wrong. It's just, it's not that common to have a really anatomically different SI joint from one side to the other, unless there was like maybe a, a major injury. That well, happened. he also didn't lead this conversation with, oh, I've been dealing with all this pain and all this issue. And so then I went to go figure yeah. this out. Right. It was like I went and saw a, a chiropractor told me I have this. Surprise. Yeah. Mm hmm. So.